this character from New York, this cop, I said, why don't you let me just do street fighting? You guys handle the martial arts and sure. let me do the street fighting. And the stunt coordinator went, yay, <laughs> you know, I get to do something really. And the stuff they came up with for me, it's such choreography. And there's so much uh, m muscle uh, uh, control yeah. when you're doing your own stunts, of man. Course. Pulling punches. I mean, everybody knows, you know. I mean, I, I had an instance, actually, I was, my first movie was Goodfellas. Mm -hmm. And I was in the back seat, and De Niro and Leota were punching me. And De Niro was actually <laughs> oh, connected a yeah. couple times. People don't know. You know, and... Uh, and so, you know, I, I mean, what are you going to say? Hey, you know. <laughs> you well, we, in the ring, we call those working punches. That's yeah. what we do out there. But everybody, yeah. well, someone stiffs you. They don't know. And, they, and yeah. you know, you just go, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, it yeah. happens. So, you know, and then you're not going to say anything to Robert De Niro. <laughs> you know? Well, uh, <laughs> Hugh, um, Hugh Jackman did yeah. the WWE. Yeah. And he came in as a guest host. And he's supposed to hit this guy, run in and hit him in the jaw. And, yeah. you know, it's supposed to be a working punch. He broke his jaw. Because he yeah, didn't yeah. know how to punch, yeah, yeah. and those things happen, and especially in stunts when you're working with actors. I've worked with actors who uh, and done stunts, and they say, "Oh, I can do this." And we did tug of war, and they're yanking like mad. No, just work it, make it look like you're yeah, working. Yeah. You're killing me, you know. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're going to be exhausted, no, exactly. and beat up. And you know, the other thing is too. I, so I always like to do my own stunts because it's more screen time. Right. But also, I have to pay respect to my stuntman. There's a guy who who does a, a lot of who's on the set when I when I have stunts to right. do. Uh, a great great friend of mine, and you know. I want him to make his paycheck too. So there's a few things here and there that we can share. But if it's close and it's screen time, I want that. I want you know. I want. I want well, you had a great stunt with Kim Cattrall in Sex and the City. That was no stunt. <laughs> <laughs> You've all seen it, and you don't live that down because everybody brings it up, don't they? No, you know it's really funny. I get to the gym and people go, "Hey, hey, my wife saw you on Sex and the City," and I said. If your wife recognized me on Sex in the City, you got a big problem because my ass was on more than my face. That was so funny. <laughs> we ran around a little clip of that, but I, I still laugh when I see it because you know it's 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 unique. Well, and one of the reasons I got that job was because the executive producer is an old friend of my wife's who knew that I wrestled in high school and college, and he said I need this guy to play an NYU wrestling coach. I said great, and so they flew me out to New York. I went and I it was on my birthday, and. Uh, What's really interesting about it is the director had this sheet of, of sexual positions, and he says, so what do you think? Does anything, I go, well, this one kind of looks like a half Nelson. This one kind of kind of looks like, you know, a, a wizard, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I said, so we can do this and that. So we, we planned the whole thing together. But the funniest thing was um, that Kim pulled me aside, and she said, uh, I'm so glad you did this. She goes, sometimes they get guys who aren't actors in here, and they're, yeah, and, and I go, I, I go. Please, you kidding me? I said, this is my birthday. I said, I can't think of a better gift than to bang you five times. Absolutely on TV. You Absolutely. Know? She goes, it's your birthday. And I go, yeah. And I didn't say anything till now because we're almost done. You know. Right. Sure enough, at the end of the, I'm wrapped. I'm walking to my car, and uh, she sends a PA with a beautiful like Carvel ice cream cake for oh, my nice. birthday. Oh, nice. How nice. Just sweetheart, and and really in terrific shape. Does only yoga. Yeah, I hear yeah. yoga is really good. Yeah. I don't think I can bend like that. Well, I did one yoga class. It was fantastic. I actually did a movie with Stephanie Zimblis. Uh, we, we did it up in Canada. Uh, I played a real bad guy. She ends up killing me in the end with a bow and arrow. And uh, so we got to be good friends, and she lives close down here. And uh, we were talking about it, and she did this Bikram yoga. She said, I'll, uh, you know, I want you to come to class. I said, I'll tell you what. I will come to your Bikram class if you come to my boxing class, which by the way, was introduced to me by Shannon Tweed. Really? Shannon yeah. did a, 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 um, a couple of episodes of my old show back in the 90s, and her son and my sons were all studying karate at the same place. So I see Shannon, and she goes, you should take boxing class with me. I go, hey, I take boxing class with you. You're playboy bunny. Plus, you she's know? tall. She's big. Yeah, she's, she's a big, big girl. girl. Yeah. She says, just come. You know, just yeah. come. So I came, and I started and I started training boxing, you know? And um, it, was, it was fantastic. But That's a good workout. Amazing yeah, workout. It's a good workout, and you know what? After training, and and going into the ring just to do like light sparring with with the with the teacher, mm -hmm. I have a whole new uh, uh, attitude towards boxing. I understand the science of it now yeah. a little bit better. Yeah, I understand that it's it's strategy. It's not slugging. It's it because if you slug, you're going to die in the first. Well, round. it's it's the same thing with wrestling. People come over and say, "Oh, I can do that," and they get in the ring and they're stumped. Yeah. Wrestling is like dancing with violence. Yes, you have to know your steps. You have to know where you're going to go, and then you got to forget them and think about your character. Right, like acting. You got to. It's not going from here to there. It's what you do in between from here to there. Exactly. So you have to remember to be the character, and then remember what's coming up without having to overthink and then screw up and then hit the guy wrong and then take the wrong bump. And you can't memorize 
10 minutes out here of a match because halfway through you'll forget because it's not like lines. I mean, you have yeah. to work the audience. They're live. Yeah. So yeah. you have to know how to call it like a, like a comedian knows how to shift gears when they're not laughing. It's an improvisation show. Exactly. It's exactly an improv. Exactly. I mean, that's, a, that's what you do with improv comedy. And the very basic, basic rule in improvisation is to heighten and explore each moment in the positive, which would work in the wrestling ring because if you, if you negate... If you negate somebody's reality mm -hmm. in a wrestling ring, then the whole show stops. Exactly. But if you take what he's given you and you build off of it in the way of a move, physically, or in the way of an emotion, you know, uh, right. it makes the whole show better. It gives him something to work with and something yeah. to respond to, then you have something to respond to. Exactly. Otherwise, it goes dead. Yeah, because if you, you know, if you just stand there after he hits you, you know, that's a big joke, one big laugh once, and then it's dead. The whole we have, a, we have, we have a, a term for that. You better sell for me, <laughs> or there's a receipt coming. <laughs> yeah, yes, you exactly. Know? Yeah. And, and that's just how it works. Uh, did you take acting classes, or you just had the God's gift of doing it? I was very lucky. I think I, I, I always say that I, um, I'm now being paid for the very thing I got kicked out of Catholic school for. Um, but I did have an improvisational comedy background. That's what I was studying. I only had about a year of acting classes on and off before I really started to work so I don't feel like technically I'm a trained actor but my practical experience yeah has has helped me uh, along the way and the other thing too is I think I told I told you that I I entered acting at a, at a later age I mean I was 34 or 30 33 or 34 yeah. the funny thing is that all those actors uh, who were the same age as me who waited tables or did what they did, all honorable professions, to become actors, mm -hmm. didn't have the life experience that I had. I ended up playing in the next 20 years the very people that I existed at parity with in the real world. Sure. I played CEOs. I played lawyers. I played you know professional people. But I was that. So I never had to study it. And, right. I, never, and I didn't sacrifice that time uh, you know, doing something else to feed my acting habit. It just right. happened. It, just it, was happened. A, it was a blessing that way. When you did the improv comedy, did it, did it lead you into any of stand-up comedy? Did you ever want to do that? I did what I what I consider a cheat stand-up, um, and I can I, and someday I'll, I'll show you the uh, the tapes of this. A good friend of mine from the improv group, Gary Richmond, he and I <coughs> created a character uh, at Second City. We were in, our group was in an improv competition at Second City in Chicago, and he He's Jewish, and he had always done this great old Jewish accent. So we're off in the wings, and we have to come on to this doctor's uh, office sketch. And I said, by the way, this is another thing that became very physical after this. I said, let me let just hook up, hook up arms like this, and let's walk in. So we walked in to this doctor's office sketch as Hasidic Siamese twins. So we're bound together from the yeah, waist up, yeah. and it cracked everybody up. So when we came back to New York... We got a sweatshirt that was sewn together, and it said, I heart, and on his it said, New York. And we ended up doing stand-up. We did the improv. We did a place downtown that was, as a matter of fact, you know who was on a bill with us, with the headliners on the bill? Ellen DeGeneres was, was headlining when we, you know, when these yeah. hole-in-the-wall clubs in New York, uh, Joy Behar, all these people. And we'd come on and do, we called them the Kipperman, Saul and Herschel oh, Kipperman. That's funny. And he played the guitar. I didn't. So he did the chords. I did the strumming. We each had one pass. But I'll tell you something. I never thought that I would have to have so much power in my left arm to lift him up on the stage with me or walk walk together to make this appearance uh -huh, of, a, uh -huh. of a, uni a unified body. There was a movie like that. Yes, uh, way after. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. I forget. I, I watched da it. Matt Damon. No. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, no, it was uh, uh, Woody Harrelson, wasn't it? No, it was It was Greg, what's his name, and, uh, and Matt Damon, I think. What was Matt Damon, huh? It was a funny movie. Yeah. Yeah. Funny movie. Yeah, and this I and mean, we did this back in 1984. We were actually on HBO held its first uh, funniest man in the world contest, and we we went into it. We didn't make it into the finals or get on, but we were there with the t-shirt and oh, the yarmulkes and one. That's phase. really funny. I, I think improv and comedy is the best. And and wrestling too is it's a, it's a it's a theater in the round where you can have a comedy match and be funny. Right. There's some guys that do it, and then they, and a lot of guys like Roddy Piper has gone to stand up comedy from there. Right. He's doing that now. Well, and it trains you, you know, those kind of things, those, those forced improvisations, either in the wrestling ring or in an actual improv group. Yeah. They also train you how to think on your feet. Exactly. Okay. And 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 if your goal is to do what we said before, is to heighten and explore each moment in a positive, there can be no better training for life. Right. If you're a salesperson. You you get an objection, boom! You turn it into a positive. You know it's it works all Absolutely. the way around. Absolutely, you know.
It's, it's just doing this show and doing that. I mean, it's really changed me through the years and learning how to deal in public, dealing with people, being on the spot with responses and things like that, and right. I've gotten stuff off it. Um, today, if, if someone comes up to you, and I, and I know I hear this all the time, but I want to be a wrestler in the worst way, and I get these emails from these kids, it's my dream to become a WWE wrestler. I know I have my music entry, and I have my character, but they don't know what it takes to get it. And it's the same right. thing with acting. They come out here to be actors. Yeah. What would you advise somebody today that comes out here and wants to get into acting? I would advise them to do what my son is, is doing. He he was going to one of the top film, uh, top colleges in the country that has one of the top film schools, and I and and this is something that was told to my wife before I even knew her from a, a very famous leading man actor in the fifties. Um, I would say if you want to be an actor, have something else in life that you love as much mm -hmm. that you can do to make a living. Exactly. Because if you are desperate to be an actor, you will never be an actor because your instrument needs to be open and your instrument can't possibly be open to either learn the trade or deliver the trade if you are worried about where your next meal is coming from or the rent or anything else. That's what I tell them. They want to be wrestlers. I say, get yourself a career in something else. Do it as a love and a passion. And if it works out, it works out. Yeah. But it's the same thing today. If you don't need it, it comes to you. I get calls. I got a call a day from a network. Uh, they wanted to come out and shoot something here, and somebody else wanted to come shoot something here. And so I said to them, what's your offer? What are you paying for, for my time and my use of my house? Right. Oh, no, we're going to give you free publicity. I've heard this for years. And for years I said, okay, I don't need that anymore. No. <laughs> I need to buy my protein yeah, exactly. and my supplements. Exactly. And I need a paycheck. And I said, you're calling me and you get a paycheck, right? Oh, yeah, every week. Yeah. And your boss gets a paycheck every week. Oh, yeah, I need a paycheck. Yeah. And then they said, well, I'm sorry we don't pay. And it was one of the big shows on Channel 4. Right. Uh, I said, fine, can't do it. Yeah. Two days later they called me, how much would you like? Exactly. Exactly. Happens every time. Sure. Sure, you know, and, and you know, and and that's the thing, you know, you have something else going on that you, that gives you, the, you know, the, the the I'll say luxury, although it's not a luxury, but at least the, the you know, the mindset that says, you know, my time is worth something, my expertise is worth something. Absolutely. And I remember a long time ago when I was uh, in between jobs and I was still in the business world, I bought this book called What Color Is Your Parachute. And there was a couple things in there that were great about finding jobs and you know the right job for you and everything. But there was one thing they always said and that it stuck with me forever, no matter what business I'm in or what career I happen to be in at the time. It said, you never give your expertise away for free. Absolutely. I've heard that. You know? And, and you know, I, I, sure, I do it. To, I have some, some young kid actors who, who want me to coach them for an audition or something. And I say, you know what? Come on over. We'll coach. I, the same said, thing. I said, if you get the show, you can pay me, you know? Uh, but, but, um, but when it comes to you know people wanting to market you or you know, or, or make bu make you know bucks off of that's, your a, different that's yeah, a different deal. That's a different deal. Thing. I've done the same thing with wrestlers, and I've, I let them come for months at a time free because I know they don't have money, and they're yeah. all real good about it. Yeah. But every once in a while, when you give yourself away like that to somebody, they take advantage of it, and then they don't show up when you're right. waiting for them. They don't even call and say, "I'm giving you this for free. Give me the courtesy of a phone call and right. cancel. Don't right. just not show, right? Because it's just not right." But with companies like you're saying, you just they have the money. Yeah. Oh, They're going to sure. spend it somewhere else on craft service. Oh, that's right. They'd rather buy extra chips. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some of the, the favorite shows you've done? Just give me a few of them so people will know. What?